I just returned from a nine night sailing on board Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. It was an amazing holiday cruise. It was filled with lots of fun activities, lots of specific activities, lots of entertainment, and lots of food. Today, I just wanna give you guys a quick rundown of what I thought about this cruise. What did I think about the entertainment? Was it good? What did I think about the dining? Was it up to par? What did I think about the stops? Were they good? And ultimately, what did I think about the ship? Did it meet my expectations? Was it everything that I was waiting for? You all know that it's been three years since I had been on a cruise, and this was my first cruise back. So today, I'm gonna give you the full rundown, and we're gonna discuss everything Odyssey of the Seas. <laughs> I'm Joe from Just Out Exploring and today, like I said, I'm going to run down Odyssey of the Seas. So this was a New Year cruise. If you guys watched my last video, I'll put it up here, but I talked about was a New Year's cruise right for you? But today, that's not what I'm going to talk about. Today, I just want to talk about the ship, the activities, the entertainment, and everything that was happening around the ship during our cruise. And I want to give you guys my honest feedback about what I thought. Now remember, I've been on several Royal Caribbean ships and cruises. This wasn't even close to my first cruise. I love Royal Caribbean and they're one of my favorite cruise lines. I sail them as often as I can. Odyssey of the Seas was a new class of ship and a new ship that I hadn't been on. Obviously, it just came out last year. This was my first cruise in three years. I hadn't even had a chance to try that class or that ship. So overall, what did I think of the ship? I thought the ship was beautiful. I thought the ship was amazing. And I thought there were some really bright spots on there. But I also thought there were some misses. Let's talk about what I thought was amazing. First of all, the pool deck. The pool deck was absolutely beautiful. The way they themed it to the Caribbean with their fake little palm trees and their casitas and with all the different colors that they've put out there, it really gives it a fun Caribbean ocean vibe the solarium the solarium is really cool it was completely enclosed i like the cascading pool and i thought where they put the hot tubs it was a pretty good spot they had them set all the way forward right in the front of the ship with great views just overlooking where you were headed the cplex i loved the cplex the cplex was a really cool spot on board this ship i loved how it had the playmakers up there i loved how there was families that were able to entertain the adults at the playmakers and the kids kind of having fun playing basketball or dodgeball or volleyball or bumper cars or whatever the activity was that was going on. It was a really cool spot for families to be able to hang out. I like the Esplanade. I like the layout of the Esplanade for the most part. I like that there was the Starbucks there. I like that the Sorrentos was there right next to the, to the Cafe Promenade. The shops were there and it was overall pretty open space. So the layout there was definitely centered around being the entertainment district on board the ship. Everything you needed to do, the music hall, the Schooner bar, the, the pub, everything that there was gonna be some sort of entertainment seemed to be in the Esplanade. Boleros was back on the Esplanade, but it was all right there. I really liked the casino. The casino was down on deck three. It was very well kept. It was very clean. You barely smelt any smoke down there. And it had a really alive vibe on our ship. There was tons of people down there. It was plenty big. It did get a little crowded sometimes in the early night, but it, it, it held that crowd really well. The theater was just a typical Royal Theater. It looked like all the rest of them, nothing special. But the 270 Lounge, that area on the back of the ship that was multifunctional, that was probably one of the highlights of this ship and what I would assume is a highlight of this class. When you go back there and you have the sweeping views of the ocean, you could see the wake. Let's talk about some of the misses on board. I thought that where they put Giovanni's and Giovanni's wine bar was in completely the wrong area. They pushed Giovanni's wine bar back towards the back of the ship above the main dining room and it just kind of felt out of place. They had a they had a, a high-end jewelry shop there and they had the Giovanni's table and then they had the Giovanni's wine bar. 
and it really just wasn't utilized. It was way out of the way and it was pushed way too far back. It was a beautiful space that they could have done something a little different. They could have switched Azumi and Wonderland and pushed those two restaurants back and brought Giovanni's where Wonderland is and left and put the wine bar right next to that. And then it would have all fit in with the entertainment district. So there was, there was a really big miss there. Now, when we talk about the solarium, it's 100% in, enclosed, which was nice because it was temperature controlled, but it was noisy in there. When you think about the solarium, oftentimes you think that's going to be a serene place to go escape and that you're going to you're going to feel relaxed and peaceful up there. There were so many days where it was so crowded because we had four C days. You could find a seat and there was always somewhere to sit and, and be. But it was very, very noisy when you were underneath all those glass panels and it and it just echoed the noise and it amplified the noise pretty it, it amplified the noise pretty greatly. So that was, I think, was a miss. The TV spot. Now they put that TV that in the middle set of pools with the middle pool. It was shaded by the structure that housed the North Star. So it had a really good spot to it where you would be able to see that TV all day. The problem was is that they put some of those palm trees in front of where you would sit. They put some of the, the lifeguard umbrellas or right where you're trying to watch the movie. Uh, when you're up at the top deck trying to watch from the, the hot tub, that the trees are right in the way, there's panels right in the way. So even though it was in a good spot, they kind of messed up some of the aesthetics around it, which would have let you really enjoy that TV. I thought the main pool was too small and the splash pad on board was, was too small for the amount of people that were there. It was really a struggle to find a chair on the pool deck at any point in time. And there was often times where you couldn't even sit along the edge of the pool to try to get your feet wet while you were just enjoying and soaking up the sun. One other hit. Let me talk about one other hit. And I know this is out of place, but I'm just kind of shooting from the hip right now. Another hit was the lime and coconut bar. This bar was awesome. There was three different bar sections that you could walk up to. There was one on the main pool deck, one above that, and then one facing that middle pool where the TV was. And those bars were always crowded. They were always had a good energy. There was a lot of people over there just enjoying the, the, the vibe. And I thought that was a really big hit on these newer ships compared to some of the older ships where they had the sky bar and the pool bar and they had all these different names and it was disjointed. I love that this was one continuous theme. Now let's talk about the entertainment on board. The entertainment on board was so varied that it kind of blew my mind. When we talk about the individual performers, the comedian, he was hilarious. We went and watched both of his shows and he was so funny. There was a juggling magician on board and he put on a great show. There was a, a live band on there called Led Zeppelin. Now, if you like that kind of music, they were great. They were fantastic, but that was their shtick. They played 100% Led Zeppelin and for me, it kind of got old really fast. The entertainer playing at the piano bar was fantastic. But again, his show was almost the same every single night. The guitar player in playing in the, in the pub, that guy was next level awesome. His show every night was different. He took re requests. He, he would play. The, la the second or third to last night, he just kept playing. He didn't want to stop. He felt the energy. People were tipping him big. He was loving it. It was such a good, good vibe. The stage show effectors was fantastic. The, it had a really good theme. It was really musical. The flying drones were spectacular. And it just happened. It, it was just an all around good, entertaining show. I didn't go see Showgirls. I should have, but I missed out on that one. But we did go see the book. And I got to be honest with you. What the heck was Royal Caribbean thinking with this show? This show does not match any other show that I've seen on any Royal Caribbean production. I've seen their Broadway shows. I've seen their stage shows. I've seen, I've seen all kinds of shows on, on Royal Caribbean. And this one, while the, the performers were fantastic, they were so talented. The show was disjointed. I had no idea what, is, what it was about. And I kept looking at my friend and thinking, are we going to stay through this whole thing? What are we doing? I don't understand what's going on. At one point, I thought it was like, oh, we have to guess what story they're, they're reenacting. And we would go from there. 
but it just, it never landed. I never understood what was going on and it, it really confused me. Now let's talk about dining. Dining was awesome. Now I know this is gonna be a controversial topic for a lot of you guys, but I gotta say, dining was awesome. El Loco Fresh for lunch is the hidden gem on the ship. It is so fresh, it is so good, it is so tasty that I oftentimes wondered why it was so empty. There was never a line there. I don't know if people knew when it was open or what they could get there or how it worked, but it was oftentimes empty. It was one of our favorite spots to hit up for lunch on the ship. The other spot that ended up being a favorite for us is the is the uh, Cafe 270. I would go down there for a proudly serving Starbucks coffee and it was fantastic. It was just like the other one, but it's included in the drink package. So I had to take advantage of that. The, the food in there was fresh. It was prepared to order. Uh, some of the salads were pre-made, but they would dress them after you ordered them so they weren't sitting and, and, and soaking. They, the, the sandwiches, the, they were pressed to order. So if you ordered a panini, it was pressed when you ordered it. There was a lot of really good fresh food in there and that was a really good choice for us. Uh, I think that's the only two places we ate lunch. We never went anywhere else for lunch. And as far as dinner, we had the teppanyaki one night. And I know that I talked about this before the cruise, that that was one of the places that I was looking most forward to. And I got to tell you, it lived up to the expectation. It was such a fun show. The chef that we had was awesome. And I know they all kind of do the same, the same routine, but he just had a good vibe to him. And it, he really made it fun. The food was good. It was a little a little fatty, a little too much oil and stuff like that. But I like my food that way. Lots of butter and lots of oil. That's the way that I eat. Some of the people that I, I had dined with, they thought it was a little bit too much. So perhaps you might have to ask him, hey, hold back on the oils a little bit. And he will. He, or he made the food differently for each person based on what their preference was. Some people didn't want mushrooms touching their thing or onions. And he just did what whatever you ask. So don't be afraid to ask. Finally, we did not eat at the main dining room. One time, not a single time. We went to the Windjammer pretty much every night for dinner. And I gotta tell you, the food at the jam in the Windjammer, in the Jammer, it was spot on. It was delicious. It was flavorful. It was plentiful. There was great variety. They changed it every night. One night, one night we had beef Wellington. And it was so tender and so delicious that I thought I could have been eating at a restaurant where they had just served it to us. There was always something good in the carving station. There was always fresh salads. There was always fresh sides. The Indian food is knock it out of the park. The buttered chicken on there, I couldn't wait for every single time that it was gonna be up and served. It was so, so delicious. I probably should have tried the main dining room, but the food in the Windjammer was just too good. I, I just didn't feel the need to sit down for an extended dining experience. The staff on board this ship was next level friendly. I did not encounter one single person on this ship that was working that was not willing to go away above and beyond to make sure that everything that I needed as the cruise guest was met. By the second day, the lady Denise that was serving coffee up there in the Windjammer, by the second day she knew my name and she knew my order. I don't know how she did this, but it was so impressive. My room steward by the second day knew my name, knew my, like when I was leaving the room, Mr. Joseph, do you need this? Mr. Joseph, do you need that? When do you want me to go to your room? I, I don't know how these people do it. It is so impressive with a smile, with happiness. I returned that gratitude to them and I remembered their names and I used their names. And I just love interacting with people on a cruise ship this way because I want it to feel personal. They're making my vacation amazing. I wanna make sure that they, they understand that and they feel it. Extra gratitude, extra gratuities, Whatever it took, we wanted to make sure they were taken care of, and I and I really enjoyed what they brought to this cruise ship. I also want to talk about activities on board. The activities on board were okay. They were just normal Royal Caribbean activities. I thought the Crazy Quest was not as fun as it used to be. It was back for our sailing. I thought it was just ho-hum, and I think a lot of it had to do with where and how they do the Crazy Quest on the ship. They do it up in the C-Plex, you stand around the outside of the C-Plex where, where you have to then try to run into the C-Plex to, to find the cruise director, to bring whatever it is. I don't want to spoil it, right? You guys know. If you know the Crazy Quest, you know the Crazy Quest. But it's just the layout on this ship just didn't work. And it changed it. 
And I don't know that the things that were going on were the best that I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of quests. So it was just okay. The, the parties that they threw were fantastic. Typical Royal Caribbean themed party, 70s night, Caribbean night, all the different themes that they had, they, they knocked it out of the park. And the entertainment staff with the, with the, with the karaoke and with the trivia, they just, they just, they get it. And it really made for an entertaining time. Anytime you went to one of these different activities that was going on, it, the vibe was good. The, the staff again was just knocking it out of the park and they, they really have a good grasp on everything that's going on. All right, well, that's my review about Odyssey of the Seas. I hope that you guys enjoy my honest feedback. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And what did you guys think? Of, have you been on Odyssey of the Seas? What did you guys think about it? Do you agree with some of the highlights I feel found from the ship or do you disagree? Do you think that the ship is not what I made it out to be? I'm really curious to get everyone's feedback on this ship because I, I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't my favorite ship. Not by far was it my favorite ship. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say. And I want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Remember, I'm Joe from Just Out Exploring. I look forward to seeing you guys out there just out exploring.